Welcome, guys, to another episode of the Curly on You podcast. Today we have with us Kevin. So, Kevin, please introduce yourself. How you want to be introduced? Yeah. So my name is Kevin Karcher. I'm the author of Talk Is Cheap: The Fight Against Mediocrity. I'm a two times two time director of sales for uh, one of the companies with a hundred million dollar plus company. I sold thirty million dollars in products over the last three years, and I help people make six figures. So that's what I do. Oof, amazing. So tell us more about how you started your journey and your story. Yeah, that's a great question. So when I went to college, I went to college because everyone told me to go to college, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And so I remember looking at the hundreds of different ma- or you know degrees that the college has, and I major. I narrowed it down to like five or six, and I. I thought about it. I prayed about it. I like looked at the different career options and career paths, and I landed on finance because I thought private equity would be cool. And I ended up like acing my accounting class and getting like a B in my finance class. So I was like, I'm going to do accounting. And so, and I, I did accounting because it was the language of business. And I thought, hey, if you can, if you know the books of a business, you can do anything. So I graduated in accounting got an accounting job after I graduated and hated it, hated my life, was not, didn't feel like I was going to ever reach my income goals. And so one day I was sitting there and I'm like, I have to make a change. Like I would rather be broke on the side of the street than do what I'm doing another day. And I remember reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was 13 or 14 years old. And I remember him saying sales is one of the greatest skills you can have. He said he was a best-selling author, not a best written author. He says, if you can sell, you can do anything and go anywhere. And so I was like, I'm going to get a sales job. I don't care what, I don't care how, I don't, I'm, I'm going to get into sales. So I started praying and seven days later, my neighbor was like, oh, hey, I have a, I have a job. Literally like lived, like I could throw a rock and hit his house. And it ended up being not a great time to get into sales. I had just spent all my money on a ring to get to my then fiance. And so I didn't have any money and I was going into all commission sales, but I thought, Hey, you know, there's never going to be a perfect time. And I didn't sell anything. I think for like my first three or four weeks. And so I was like, crap, like, did I make a mistake? What's going on? And this was like, this wasn't sales where, you know, you have people walk in and be like, Hey, I want to buy something. It was, I was using my cell phone going on Google, calling businesses cold and being like, Hey, do you want to buy this? Calling 50 to 70 businesses a day. So it was really hard. I was not doing well at it. And at that point I'm like, I either have to figure this out or go back to accounting. I'm like, I'm not going back to accounting. But wait a minute. What were you trying to sell? It was a software product to help businesses build their online reputation. Okay. Okay. Continue. And, and so I decided, I'm like, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to figure this out. And so I started reading a ton. You, you mentioned I like books. I started reading a ton. I bought my first ever like course on sales. And from there it took off. I, I remember there was a $97 course and I remember entering in my credit card and I'm like, man, this is a lot of money. Like, what if it doesn't work? And fast forward, I've spent like $17,000 on courses now, <laughs> but I spent the $97 and two weeks later. I made $2,000 from what I'd learned on that course. And so I'm like, okay, let's keep doing this. So I kept spending money, investing in courses and products, and eventually ended up being the director of sales for that company eight months later. And then my dad owns a home building company. So he's like, hey, come sell homes. Like, it's a really good time. And so I thought, okay, cool. And because I had done outbound, like cold, cold calling businesses, I sold almost two times the amount of homes that everyone else did because they didn't know how to do that. And same story, ended up being the director of sales, was slated to take over the company. Like he's like, my dad's like, hey, if you wanna take over this company, like you can, if you want. And most people would have been like, yeah, do it. Like that's, that's an easy choice. But as I started thinking about it, that wasn't my true passion. I, sales had changed my life. I went from making $60,000 as an account to over $400,000 a year in sales. And so I'm like, I wanna help other people do this. And so I quit my job just like, well, there's, there's a story in between that, but basically like, it was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And so I quit my job and started the fight against mediocrity program where I help people get into sales and make six figures. So kind of a long story, but that's uh that's my journey to where I am today. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. So when you were deciding to go into sales and taking the risky move, was anyone supporting you? That's a good question. I didn't really tell very many people about it, honestly. I, I just knew. I didn't really care what anybody else said. At that point, I think if I would have asked someone, I think I would have asked my friends and family, they would have told me, don't do it. Like you have a really good job with a really good company. Like, don't mm -hmm. do it. It's going to be risky. You've never done sales before. And so I rem as I remember it, I just started praying. I, I believe in God. And so whatever you believe in the universe or whatever, Amen. I just started praying. I said, like, please, like, I need to get out of this. Please bless me with the sales job. And so I honestly didn't tell very many, many people, I think because I knew that they would probably discourage it. And I was mm -hmm. just determined, like, this is what I'm doing. I don't care what anybody says. I remember my dad saying, like, if you're going to do sales, make sure it's something that people want and need. Retrospectively, I probably would have sold something else. I probably wouldn't have done what I did, which is why the students that come into my program, I say, Hey, I, I made a mistake on what I sold. And so I want to help you sell something that's a lot easier to sell. But yeah, this is why where, today when I was on a walk, listening to the podcast of Alex Ramosi, I forgot the podcast. He said that if you have a killer offer and I also took like another course, that was like $30, for example, $27, something like that. And it's about, it's about Facebook ads. But first of all, I didn't even complete the course because halfway through it, they're selling me into another program. But the thing that I took from it that is very powerful, but I think I needed Alex Hormozzi to say it again, is that have a killer offer. So this is why I realized that I'm thinking, I'm actively thinking, I'm ser seriously considering of like making a sales funnel and I'm very new to this stuff. I'm pretty new to this stuff. Making, making a sales funnel of saying like, Hey, take this $500 like content strategy, one-on-one -on -one call with me guaranteed to bring you like over 50,000 views in the next 60 days, for example, or take your money back. And on that call, I'm just going to say my services, what I provide and stuff, because I truly believe that they will achieve that goal. I believe in my, I believe in my team this is why I hired them. But even if that doesn't work and they take that $500 back, I still make money with my services. But of course I don't want that to happen because it's bad reputation for the, for my company. So, but having this killer offer will bring more people into the sales funnel. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I listened to the same podcast, Alex Hormozzi and Stefan Graham. And what I thought was cool about what Alex Hormozzi did is he said, Hey, it's $500 um, to get into the weight loss program. If you lose 20 pounds, I'll give you your money back. And so they're like betting on themselves, which is cool. And then he goes into like how he actually gets that money in the end. But, you know, same, same thing I'm thinking for you and myself is like, how can you help people bet on themselves? Maybe you do, hey, if you get 50,000 views, I'll give you your money back. So they're like, incentivized to work really hard but maybe when they get it you you get them into another offer like alex did so it's really cool i agree like if you have the right offer you know people will want to do it no matter what but on the flip side what i'm thinking is what gary v is saying that he's saying that a lot of people are in the transactional situation and he's into the relationship and to the brand building and i'm just like thinking again of like, Hey, if Gary V is saying something, he is saying it because he believes in it and he doesn't want to ruin his reputation. So he's giving his best advice. His advice that he's, he is providing to fortune 500 companies. And I'm just debating between the two situations here of like, what's the best thing to do. But I think I'm going both ways. I'm going like, for example, 50% like Alex Hormozzi. The, the, the transactional side of like sales and I'm going at 50% on branding, content marketing, just building my brand. We'll have to hear what you think yeah. about this. That's a good question. So the phrase, what I learned is when you have too many different voices, too many different mentors telling you things, they're going to contradict each other. 
and you're going to get confused and you're not going to do anything. And so you're right. You know, you've got contradicting, contradicting views of Gary Vee and Alex Ramosi in a sense, because Alex Ramosi is all about acquisition, get the customer, get the sale. I mean, his company is literally called acquisition.com. I think he does a really good job at taking care of his customers, but then you've got Gary Vee on the other side where to an extent, it sounds like he's saying, Hey, just do stuff for free and the money will come. And so it's like, okay, do I, do I acquire customers and get money or do I just give stuff away for free and content marketing, all that stuff? I think there's definitely a balance. I'm probably more on the Alex Hormozzi side because until you make a sale, you don't really have a business. Until you get a paying customer, you don't really have a business. And so when I, I have a few business owners who have come into my program because they, the first step of a business is getting customers and I'm good at helping them get customers. And so what I tell them is, Hey, just get customers at first. It might be okay to charge less than what you know you should, because when you get a customer, and even if it's for less than you think you should charge, you're learning and you're refining your process and you're getting better. It's like Alex Ramosi says, your work works on you more than you work on it. And so he wouldn't be where he is today if he wouldn't have, and myself as well, like if I wouldn't have gone through the trenches of sales, like selling something really, really, really hard, I wouldn't be where I am today. And it sucked and it was hard, but that, that hard time helped me get to where I am today. And so long story short, I'm probably more on the Alex Ramosi side of like get customers and give them a great experience while at the same time, you know, putting out a lot of great content. Yes. Amazing. So if someone came to you, if a young passionate entrepreneur wanted to start his own business, how would you guide him in getting his clients? What's a step-by-step -step process that you would tell him? Yeah, great question. It depends a little bit on the, so maybe I'll give two examples. Like if they were starting maybe a landscape company, I would say go knock doors in a newer subdivision, newer neighborhood where people don't have grass or sprinklers yet, just start knocking doors and say, Hey, can I, can I put in your sprinklers in the spring? Just get in front of the customers. I would say, don't buy a trailer. Don't make a logo. Don't do business cards. Don't make sure it's like, don't buy a truck. Don't buy anything. Just go get your first customers. Because that's, and then if it was an online product, like a course or a program or something like that, same thing, I'd say, go get your first customers. But with that, I would say transition your social media into your business. So everything you post has to do with your business, whether that's giving information about, hey, here's what I do. Here's how it benefits people. Here's some free, free ideas for you. And you'll find that what happens is people who aren't your ideal client will leave and unfollow you, but your ideal client will start following you. You'll start attracting that ideal client. And then I would just message them on Instagram and get to know them and be like, Hey, I really feel like I could help you. Can we hop on a call, hop on a call with them and see if they're a good fit for your program? I wouldn't, or whatever you're selling. I wouldn't even create the program. I wouldn't create anything until you have a customer and just be upfront with them be like, Hey, the starting date is a month or two from now. You're going to be in a group of people and just build it out with them. The biggest mistake I see a lot of business owners make is they they do at all the, the businessy stuff, like getting a logo, getting a business card, creating the product or service. But how do you even know if it's a good product or service until you get someone to give you money? Like there could be a thousand people who say, yeah, once you get it done, like I'll buy it. But it's a different story when you say like, hey, it's ready to buy it. Do you want to buy it? And they have to pull out their credit card. And so that's how mm -hmm. I approach them through those two different scenarios. Yep, exactly. And I think a lot of people underestimate the amount of work that you have to put in to become a successful entrepreneur, to become an entrepreneur that actually his business is making money and not only one month of money on a consistent basis. And I think for the people that watch the podcast, especially as to that we have watched the Alex Armozi podcast, it's a bit, it's a little bit unrelated, but I love how he remains so calm and so humble when he tells 
these stories of like, hey, I, I slept on the gym. I just made 100 grand overnight. Or like, I don't know, I just sold my company for 100 million. I don't know, this just like, this is what made me feel so attracted to him because attracted in a way, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of like, yeah. he's humble. And when I heard that he has his channel just to document his life and provide what he learns to people, I was, I was all in. And once I heard that, hey, this is Alex Hermosi, I'm here to sell you nothing. I'm like, okay, it's, it's over. I'm an Alex Hermosi fan. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But th this, is the, this is the thing that I don't like about sales. And I'm more leaning into Gary V's side. Because, like, at some point, we don't like too much sales guys. Because they're too pushy and... We get, we get fed up of them. So yeah. Can you talk about more about your story as a believer? Because I'm also a believer and I think you're one of the few people that are on this podcast and are actually believers. Can you say how God ha has actually affected or impacted your life as an entrepreneur, as a, as a, are you married now? Yeah. As a husband, as a son, as a brother. Yeah, of course. And my wife and I just adopted a newborn three weeks ago. So as of three weeks ago, I'm a father too. So that's changed my perspective a lot too. I want to answer, I want to make one comment. You said, I don't like sales because a lot of salespeople are, and I just want to clarify something like, that's so true. There are so many salespeople who are pushy. And like, as soon as they start talking to you, you're like, oh man, they want to sell me something. Like they want to sell me something. I don't really want to buy it. Like, and that's what, how I was when I first started, totally like super pushy, super salesy. But as I transitioned into the different sales roles that I had, I realized that sales is something that we do every day. And if you know how to do it, it doesn't even feel like you're selling. And so for example, I have a newborn baby. He's always selling me to get food. He's like, Hey, crying. I want food. Like he's persuading <laughs> me when he gets older and we're my wife and I, we're trying to sell him to go to sleep. We're like, please go to sleep. Like we're, we're trying to persuade him to go to sleep. You getting me on this podcast, you sold me on the fact to get on this podcast. When you, you know, when I got married, I had to sell myself and sell my wife on the fact that I would be a good husband. Mm -hmm. And so, and even if, when I was an accountant, I sold my services at a fixed rate and I sold myself and I said, Hey, I'll be a good employee here. And so sales is in everything that we do. And I think there's a huge common myth misconception of like sales is just push used car salesmen. And that's true. There are that, but uh, the salespeople that I want to create, the new generation of salespeople are people that care and people that truly want to help people. Because it's like, I'm sure if I asked you, Hey, do you, do you think your product will help people? Do you think what you do will help people? Of course. Of course. And so with that attitude, like you, you should want to help everybody. Like, Hey, I want to help everybody. And that's what sales is, is it's, Hey, I know I can help you. I want to help you. I want to do a good job for you. I want to serve you. And so, sorry, just like, I'm really passionate about it because I think everyone just, when you hear sales, you think, ah, I don't like sales, but I'm trying to reframe it as like sales is in everything. And if you know how to do it right, it doesn't even feel like sales. You're truly just trying to help someone. And if someone comes to me and they're like, Hey, I want to join your program. And they're truly, I've had people come to me and be like, Hey, I want to join your program. And they're like, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'll straight up tell them like, Hey, you're not a good fit for my program. You'd be a better fit for this one. And that's what a true, you know, service salesperson does is they, they're not in it for just the money. They're like, Hey, I truly want to help you. I'm not the right fit for you. So anyway, so sorry, that's kind of a rant, but back to your question on beliefs. So every, every stage of my journey I can pinpoint it to a, a point where I didn't know what to do. And I had to ask, you know, God, Heavenly Father, be like, I don't know what to do. Please help me. And so those situations were when I, when I quit my accounting job, like I prayed a ton and I received an answer. When I quit my job um, doing sales with the opportunity to take over a hundred million dollar company, I prayed for like a month. Like, I don't know what to do. Please help me. And I had someone's name pop into my head and he, I was like, no, nah, I don't like, that's just a coincidence. And then it popped into my head again. I'm like, okay, I'll call him. And so I called him and I'm like, Hey dude, I'll be honest with you. 
and he he owned a home building company and he did his own thing and his brother worked for his dad and so he was kind of in the same situation as i was and i said hey man i really don't know why i'm supposed to call you but i feel really strongly i'm supposed to get on the phone with you and he just everything he said like i was crying after what he told me because it was just word for word what i needed to hear and you know heavenly father put him in my path to be a teacher to me and he said everything i needed to hear and that day i quit my job and then just recently i was like questioning what i was doing i'm like because at the end of the day money isn't going to make you happy money is just you know, you can use it to do good. You can use it to do bad. Like money is just money. It's not going to make you happy. It's the purpose behind it that will satisfy you. Like if you want to serve others and help your family and give back and, you know, you know what I mean? So I was questioning what I was doing. I'm like, sales is all about making money and helping people. Like, should I really be doing this? And so I started praying about it. And then it was really cool because I had an experience where someone at the gym walked up to me. And was like, hey, like, what do you do? You're always here super early. You're here at four in the morning. Like, what do you do for work? And I was like, oh, I'm a business owner. And I didn't, I don't really like share it a ton. Like at the gym, I just like go and get my workout done. And he's like, man, I knew there was something different about, and this isn't bragging about me. I really think this was just an answer to my prayer. He's like, I could tell there's something different about you. Like, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a sales coach. I help people make six figures in sales. I just finished a book, you know, and then I'm working on some real estate stuff. And he's like, you changed my life. I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't change your life. Like I just met you. And he's like, well, not you, but what you do, a person similar to you changed my life. I read a book similar to the book that you wrote and it changed my whole life. It changed my family. I was going to get a divorce and I didn't because of it. And he started crying and I started tearing up and it hit me like, Kevin, that's an answer to your prayer. You need to be doing what you're doing right now. And so, I mean, so when you ask like what role does it play it's everything like you know to believe in god believe in heavenly father and his son jesus christ is everything to me because they're the ones that are guiding me i believe all blessings come from god and so they're the ones that are blessing me and enabling me to do what i do and help other people so i'm glad you asked that because you're right i don't think it gets talked about enough in entrepreneurship yeah exactly because i have some serious challenges not challenges kind of challenges incorporating entrepreneurship with my faith because there are some cases where no entrepreneurs just lie about it just more lies white lies or like just uh, maybe about firing a person let's say but since i'm a believer i gotta fire someone the right way i gotta be honest with him i'm gonna be honest with them like basically hey this is what we're doing and if i do a mistake with a client i have to be honest with him where in normal cases you can say, hey, like this, or like, hey, this, I, it's simple, like, ah, it's over. But we have to be like, I think, extra, extra careful with being a believer and being into entrepreneurship, like watching your steps. Because yeah. especially if people know that you're honest and always honest, they will ask you some tricky questions. And I don't know if you have experienced this before, but it happened to me and it's not the best thing ever, especially if it's from someone who has higher authority that, than you do and they're trying to bring you in a difficult situation, then that's not the best thing ever. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I totally agree there. You, you have to just decide, hey, this is who I am. I don't know, I'm an honest person. I follow what I believe. And at times in your life, you probably have to give up a lot of money, give up a lot of friends, but... You know, that's the sacrifice you make. Yep. 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 Have you have it? Have you ever had the situation where someone in higher authority was trying to put you in a difficult situation because of your honesty? You know, not necessarily having someone put me in that situation. I don't think, you know, I've, you know, had people ask me to do things that were dishonest. And I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I don't feel comfortable with it. You know what I mean? I don't know if they purposefully did it or if they just really wanted to, you know, deceive, but I've definitely had people, I can't think of a, a specific experience. I think that at this point in my life, like people know, like Kevin is this. And so a lot of people just don't ask me, 
things that they they know I'm going to say no to. But yeah. Top five books that you have ever read related to sales? It's a good question. I think I, I love Rich Dad Poor Dad. Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blunt is incredible. Uh, Six Figure Summer by Adam Webb is really good. My book, I re would recommend that <laughs> one as well. How to Win Friends and Influence People. And then this probably isn't one you'd think of with sales, but shoot the Phil Knight story mm -hmm. is, I mean, he was selling at every step of his journey. And that, I really like that book. Why isn't a hundred million deals in your top five? hundred million dollar offers. Yes, sir. I don't know. There's so many. I mean, if we could go into it, there's like influence by Robert Cialdini. There's never split the difference by Chris Voss. I mean, there's like, there's, there's some by Jeff Shore that I really like. I mean, I could, depending on the day it could change. You know what I mean? I'm excited. I know Alex is coming out with some more books. I feel like hundred million dollar offers is more like, Hey, here's how to create a really, really good offer so that people want to buy it. I don't feel like it's so much like, Hey, here's how you sell something to someone. Here's how you create an offer so that you don't have to sell as much, which I really like as well. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Where now? What's your future plans? What, what's your mission? For example, Alex Amos's mission is to document his life and just share the best like entrepreneurship practices to the, to people. What's your mission? Or like, what's your five to 10 year goal? Yeah, man, I think it'll, that's a tough question. I, I think it'll change a lot. My, my goals as of right now is I want to help a thousand people uh, make six figures in sales. And so I'm always, you know, just started running Facebook ads today. So figuring that out, I have, you know, students in my program that I'm placing with companies right now. I'm connecting with really good companies that will provide a really good experience. So that's part of it. And then I also want to own a billion dollars in real estate, multifamily real estate. Mm -hmm. And part of that is obviously like, I want the passive income and I like real estate. Part of it is I want to help other people be able to invest in real estate as well. Interesting. Interesting. Hopefully God guides you. If it's God's will, then God guides you towards that path. But hopefully me and you and all the believers included don't get caught up in our will and our goals and accept God's will and uh, what he plans for us, basically. <laughs> yeah, totally. My, my ultimate goal. So I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so when I was 19 years old, I served a two year church mission in Mexico, teaching people about Jesus Christ for two years. And that was probably like, I mean, but obviously being married and having a child and everything is really exciting and happy. But one of the happiest times of my life was sharing the gospel with other people. So my ultimate goal is to be able to, at any point needed, be able to leave and take my family and go serve missions. You know, whether that's one, I'd love to serve like more than 10 missions in my lifetime. So that's like five years, 10 years, 30 years. Like that's, that's the main goal. That's, that's what the money does for the money's not going to bring happiness. The money's going to bring opportunities to serve. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I think one of my goals is that I want to build a monster marketing and advertising and selling company, which then I put in a position where I can choose like which clients I can work with. I don't want to choose like companies that align with my values. One of those companies would be like Christian based companies. And I would help them like dominate their companies and expand as much as possible. And it also includes like environmental companies and nonprofit foundations. So basically I want to build a monster. So then I can help like these Christian companies dominate over the other companies. So that's one of my life missions, I think. <laughs> that's really cool. I like that. And it sounds like uh, Gary Vee is a huge inspiration for you as far as the advertising agency goes, right? Yep, exactly, exactly. I think I was born to, I was born an entrepreneur because I remember myself like sitting at the restaurant with my family at like 12, 13 years old. And I was analyzing what that company, what that restaurant was doing right or wrong and what advice I would give them but who would listen to a 13 year old? So 
nothing happened. I was just eating my lunch and then that's it. But I also remember when I was like eight years old and watching just some cartoons and I was just like seeing a, a pile of money. I was just visualizing how I can um, beat all these bad guys. So that's way cool. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, yeah. I like how, you know, I think we're all born with gifts. So that's really cool. Yeah. So your plan right now, you're doing Facebook ads and first of all, how was, how is that experience? What's your plan and what other plans do you have in mind to reach your goal? Yeah. I mean, all my customers to this point, I haven't used any ads. It's all been, um, organic, which is, which is why I can say, Hey, I can help, you know, teach people sales and I can help businesses is because I didn't just get all my customers from Facebook ads. It was like actual cold messaging, cold calling, you know, just getting people on the phone. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, let's start ramping this up. So the Facebook ads, I'm not a Facebook ad expert and nor do I really want to be. And so mm -hmm. I just hired a company that uh, specializes in that to do it. And today, literally today is when it's launching. So I couldn't tell you like how it's doing yet. And then, but I mean, I, I see a lot of uh, my goal to build it is I want to build a, a really great, amazing team of people who are passionate about helping people fight mediocrity and change the world. I see a lot of people, entrepreneurs who are all into like, well, I want to hire $3 an hour person from the Philippines, or I want to just do everything off Fiverr, which I think is really cool. And I think there's a lot of value there, but I don't know very many companies who you're like, this is an amazing company who doesn't have a team of people working with them, like a culture, a great team. Like you think of Apple, Apple couldn't do what they did by, you know, some people in the Philippines, some people on Fiverr, some people, you know, like it just wouldn't work. And so my goal is to build a team of amazing people and we can, we can build it together. Yep. I think it's a good start to start with freelancers and people from Upwork or Fiverr. Uh -huh. But I think over the long run, I think first of all, you should build your own team, but it's all about choices. It's all about, it's all about opportunity choices because yeah, I mean, when you have your own team, you can control it how you want, and then you can choose like the project you want to focus on at like yeah. cost value. So you find them cheaper and you understand everything. So you control the operation where, but when you work with like an agency, you pay for that extra, like, um, extra money because they have built the analytics and the knowledge and everything. So it's a trade-off trade-off. Hopefully everything goes well with you. How was your experience with content marketing? Because I see you post a significant amount of time. I'm not going to say too much or too little, a significant amount of time. How was that experience in terms of generating clients for your business? Yeah. So, I mean, that's really how I've gotten pretty much all my clients is, so I was selling homes and I had not had social media for like two or three years. I didn't like it. I, I don't like being on social media. I like just, I think if you have to post your life to make, to make life feel enjoyable, I mean, it's just not like my favorite, mm. but why I'm on social media is I was selling homes and I had a, a friend come in and buy a home with a different sales agent. And then when they found out that I worked there, they're like, man, if I would have known you worked there, I would have bought the home with you. And it was like a pretty significant commission, like a couple thousand dollars, you know what I mean? And uh, that was one. And then also I just wanted to help them. Like I wanted to be the person who helped them through the process. And so that day I really internalized the term. It's not the best, it's the best known. Mm. You think about it like, the best hamburger in your city is like whatever burger joint, you know, or whatever, but that's not the best known. That's, you know, McDonald's is the best known. They're the biggest hamburger maker in the world, but they're not the best hamburgers. And so from that day forward, I said, I'm going to post every single day about what I'm doing. And what happened was I had a lot of people unfollow me, but I had a lot of people follow me and I had the wrong people unfollow me and I had the right people follow me. And then people started saying, Hey, thanks for posting this. Thanks for doing this. Like I loved this. And what's really interesting is I've had someone who's followed me for the last uh, two years since I started posting. 
and they've never commented on anything, never messaged me, never anything. And he finally called me the other day. He's like, dude, your posts have changed my life. I'm hanging out with better people. I want to start a business. And he's never said anything. And so I just think social media is a powerful tool because where else can I, you know, I think I have like almost 7,000 followers. Like I can post something and have all those people see it instantly. Like where else can you do that? And with a reel, you can have millions of people see your stuff. So uh, I think it's super powerful. So I, are you posting only on Instagram? We only post on um, Instagram, which automatically posts to Facebook and TikTok. I only do Instagram and TikTok right now. And my, we were, I was at one and I post on YouTube as well, you know, mm-hmm. one to three times a week. The reason I only do Instagram and TikTok is because with reels and with TikTok, it's not just who follows you that can see it. It's thousands and millions of people because they, you know, if your content's good, they'll show it to as many people as you want. But like an Instagram post or a Facebook post Mm -hmm. or a LinkedIn post, they only show it to people who follow you. So that's, that's the reason. I mean, I think you should get on YouTube shorts. There's a huge organic reach can benefit your, your situation. And I think you you should also get on YouTube shorts and also LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn also has his organic reach. Yeah, I know there's the uh, YouTube shorts. That is a good idea. I need to start doing that. I was doing everything, but like I said, we tried to say, Hey, let's do these couple of things really, really, really good. And then as we build a team out, we can do more, but I think just, all, sorry, all social media platforms are good. But it's just no. like posting the video that you have on TikTok and just post or post it on YouTube title description and just post it. It's like, it's a, it's a YouTube short, like don't overthink it. I think I made a post today that said consistency and gradual improvement over perfection. So I think yes. like, of course you will take time to build your team, but it's good to have like a portfolio from now. And then over the, over the next month and years, you constantly improve. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. So yeah, great. So thank you for coming on has been a pleasure. If you would leave with one message to the audience, what would that be? I would say just start. You can do it. It's easier than you think. There's always going to be a million reasons not to follow your dream. And when I say that, I think, you know, everyone in the back of their head, they say, man, I wish I could do this or I wish I could do that. There's really no reason you can't do it. If you just start, start doing something a little bit every day. And I don't know. I just, I believe so much in human potential. I think we all have so much potential and we just limit ourselves. So I would just say start. Exactly. Bye guys. See you guys in the next one.